The discovery of the Denisovans represents one of the most remarkable breakthroughs in modern paleoanthropology. Unlike Neanderthals, who were first identified through fossil remains in the 19th century, Denisovans were discovered through genetic analysis in the 21st century. This reversal of the typical discovery process, finding the DNA before finding substantive physical remains, has made the Denisovan story unique in human history studies. But who exactly were the Denisovans? Where did they come from? The story begins in Denisova Cave, a limestone cavern nestled in Russia's Altai Mountains, where the borders of Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China converge. This cave had been known to scientists for decades and was already famous for its Neanderthal fossils. In 2008, a small team of Russian archaeologists discovered a tiny finger bone fragment in the cave's east gallery. The bone was so nondescript that it could have easily been overlooked, but researchers decided to extract DNA from it anyway, in hopes of determining whether it belonged to a Neanderthal or a modern human. The results stunned the scientific community. In 2010, when a team led by Svante Pebo at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology analysed the mitochondrial DNA from the bone, they discovered it belonged to neither Neanderthal nor modern human. Instead, it represented a previously unknown hominin group, which was later named Denisovan, after the cave where the bone was found. This discovery was remarkable not only because it identified a new human species, but also because it was identified primarily through genetic analysis, rather than through anatomical features. Following the initial discovery, scientists continued to study Denisovan remains. Several teeth and bone fragments found in the same cave were also identified as Denisovan through genetic analysis. In 2019, the scientific world received another exciting piece of the Denisovan puzzle, when a partial jawbone discovered in Baishia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau in China was identified as Denisovan through protein analysis. This finding was particularly significant because it extended the known range of Denisovans beyond Siberia and demonstrated their ability to adapt to high-altitude environments. More recently, in 2025, protein analysis confirmed that a jawbone dredged from the seafloor near Taiwan's coast was also of Denisovan origin. This further expanded our understanding of the Denisovans' geographical range, suggesting they occupied not only cold, high-altitude regions, but also subtropical environments. These discoveries paint a picture of a highly adaptable hominin group that successfully colonized diverse ecological niches across Asia. To truly understand the Denisovan genetic origins, we need to look at their place in the broader human history tree. Genetic analysis has shown that Denisovans were a sister group to Neanderthals, meaning they shared a common ancestor with Neanderthals after both groups had diverged from the lineage that would eventually lead to modern humans. The split between Denisovans and Neanderthals is estimated to have occurred approximately 400,000 to 500,000 years ago. This timeline places their divergence during the Middle Pleistocene, a time when several different hominin species coexisted across various parts of the Old World. The common ancestor of Denisovans and Neanderthals is likely to have been Homo heidelbergensis, or a closely related species. After splitting from this common ancestor, Neanderthals primarily evolved in Europe and Western Asia, while Denisovans appear to have evolved in Eastern Asia. Perhaps most intriguingly, the Denisovan genome showed evidence of genetic contributions from an even older, unknown hominin group. Approximately 4% of the Denisovan genome appears to derive from an unidentified archaic hominin that diverged from the lineage leading to Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans more than 1 million years ago. This suggests that Denisovans themselves had a history of interbreeding with other ancient human species, further complicating the story of human history. As mentioned earlier, one of the most fascinating aspects of Denisovan genetics is the evidence of interbreeding between them and other hominin groups. An extraordinary piece of evidence for Neanderthal Denisovan interbreeding comes from a bone fragment labelled Denisova 11, or Deni, found in Denisova Cave. Genetic analysis revealed that this individual, who lived approximately 90,000 years ago, had a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father, making her a first generation hybrid between the two species. This direct evidence of interbreeding suggests that encounters between these two hominin groups may not have been uncommon in regions where their territories overlapped. Additional evidence from the Denisova cave shows substantial genetic exchange between the local Denisovan and Neanderthal populations. Approximately 17% of the Denisovan genome from specimens found in the cave represents DNA from the local Neanderthal population. 
The presence of a first-generation hybrid and this significant proportion of shared DNA suggests that interbreeding between these groups may have been a common occurrence in this region. The genetic legacy of Denisovans in modern humans is one of the most compelling aspects of their story. The distribution of Denisovan genetic material in modern humans shows a distinctive pattern. The highest proportions are found in indigenous populations of Oceania, including Melanesians, Aboriginal Australians, and some Southeast Asian groups. For instance, Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians carry approximately 4-6% Denisovan DNA in their genomes. Even more striking, research published in 2021 found that the Aita Magbukon people of the Philippines possess the highest known levels of Denisovan ancestry, with approximately 5% of their genome deriving from Denisovans. In contrast, Denisovan genetic contributions are minimal in populations from Africa, Western Asia, and Europe. East Asian populations show low but detectable levels of Denisovan ancestry, typically around 0.2% of their genome. Interestingly, South Asian populations have been found to have levels of Denisovan admixture similar to those seen in East Asians, reflecting complex patterns of prehistoric human migration and interbreeding. This pattern suggests that after interbreeding with Denisovans, the ancestors of present-day Oceanians and Southeast Asians remained relatively isolated from other human populations, allowing them to retain higher proportions of Denisovan DNA. In contrast, the ancestors of present-day East Asians and Europeans may have experienced more population mixing, which diluted their Denisovan genetic contribution. Recent research has revealed an even more complex picture of Denisovan ancestry in modern humans. A study published in Cell found evidence of at least two distinct instances of Denisovan admixture into modern human populations involving Denisovan groups that had different levels of relatedness to the sequenced Denisovan from Altai. This suggests that multiple Denisovan populations existed, and they interbred with modern humans on separate occasions. Even more remarkably, a study found evidence for multiple deeply divergent Denisovan ancestries in Papuans. The researchers identified genetic material from at least three distinct Denisovan lineages in modern Papuan genomes, with these lineages having separated from each other more than 350,000 years ago. This indicates that Denisovans were not a homogeneous group, but consisted of several distinct populations that had been isolated from each other for hundreds of thousands of years. One of the most fascinating aspects of our Denisovan inheritance is how some of their genetic contributions have provided adaptive advantages to modern humans. The most well-documented example is a variant of the EPAS1 gene found in Tibetans, which helps them survive in the low oxygen environment of the Tibetan Plateau. The Tibetan Plateau, often called the Roof of the World, has an average elevation above 4,500 meters, or 14,800 feet. At such high altitudes, oxygen levels are approximately 40% lower than at sea level. Most humans who travel to such heights experience mountain sickness and, if they stay, develop chronic health problems related to the body's oxygen compensating mechanisms which include increased production of red blood cells. This adaptation, while helpful in the short term, leads to thickened blood that can cause high blood pressure, blood clots, and complications during pregnancy. Tibetans, however, have adapted to this environment remarkably well. They don't produce excessive red blood cells and can thrive at altitudes where others struggle. Researchers discovered that this adaptation was linked to a variant of the EPAS1 gene, which regulates the body's response to low oxygen. Further research published in Nature revealed something astonishing. The Tibetan version of this gene was inherited from Denisovans. Today, this Denisovan-derived variant is present in approximately 87% of Tibetans, but only about 9% of Han Chinese, reflecting its strong selective advantage in high-altitude environments. This represents one of the most striking examples of adaptive introgression. The transfer of genetic material between species that confers a selective advantage in human history. What's particularly intriguing about this discovery is that it suggests Denisovans themselves must have been adapted to high altitude environments. This hypothesis gained strong support when, as mentioned earlier, Denisovan remains were discovered in Baishia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau, demonstrating that Denisovans had indeed inhabited high altitude regions and likely evolved genetic adaptations to these environments that later benefited modern humans. Beyond the EPAS-1 gene, Researchers have identified other Denisovan-derived variants that may have provided adaptive advantages to modern humans. These include genes involved in immune function, metabolism, and skin, hair, and fat biology. 
all features that would have been important for adapting to diverse environments across Asia and Oceania. The geographical distribution of Denisovans, as inferred from both fossil evidence and genetic traces in modern populations, indicates they inhabited a vast territory across Asia. While Neanderthals predominantly occupied Europe and Western Asia, Denisovans appear to have been widespread throughout Eastern and Southeastern Asia. The limited fossil evidence currently places Denisovans in Southern Siberia, the Tibetan Plateau, Laos, and Taiwan. One particularly interesting hypothesis is that Denisovans may have been one of the few hominin species to cross the Wallace Line, a biogeographical boundary that separates the Asian and Australian faunal regions. This would place them in the same category as Homo floresiensis, the hobbit humans, and of course modern humans, a species capable of making sea crossings to colonize new territories. Alternatively, the high Denisovan DNA admixture in Papuan populations might represent higher mixing among the original ancestors of Papuans prior to crossing the Wallace Line. Despite significant advances in our understanding of Denisovans, many challenges and unanswered questions remain in this field of research. One of the primary limitations is the scarcity of Denisovan fossil remains. To date, only a handful of specimens have been conclusively identified as Denisovan, and these are mostly fragmentary, a finger bone, a few teeth, and partial jaw bones. This limited physical evidence makes it difficult to reconstruct Denisovan anatomy and appearance. The disappearance of the Denisovans represents one of the most intriguing mysteries in human history. Unlike Neanderthals, whose extinction has been extensively studied through abundant fossil evidence, the Denisovans vanished leaving minimal physical traces, making their demise particularly difficult to reconstruct. Based on current evidence, Denisovans appear to have disappeared approximately 30,000 to 50,000 years ago roughly coinciding with the expansion of modern humans across Asia and the extinction of other archaic human species. Several interconnected factors likely contributed to their extinction. Competition with expanding modern human populations would have been significant, as anatomically modern humans spread throughout Asia beginning around 60,000 years ago. They would have competed with Denisovans for similar resources, territories and ecological niches. Modern humans potentially possess technological advantages, more complex social structures, and possibly superior cognitive adaptations that gave them competitive edges in these interactions. The gradual displacement of Denisovans from their territories would have fragmented their populations, reducing their numbers and pushing them into increasingly marginal habitats. Genetic factors may have also contributed to their extinction. The high-quality genome sequenced from Denisova Cave reveals remarkably low genetic diversity suggesting small, isolated populations with limited gene flow between them. This low diversity could have reduced their adaptive flexibility and increased susceptibility to diseases, particularly novel pathogens potentially introduced by modern humans. Furthermore, small population sizes increase the risk of inbreeding depression, which can lead to reduced fertility, increased infant mortality, and decreased resistance to disease. Interbreeding with modern humans, while preserving some Denisovan genetic legacy, may have paradoxically contributed to their extinction as a distinct species. As Denisovan populations encountered expanding groups of modern humans, absorption through interbreeding, rather than outright replacement, likely occurred in many regions. This extinction by hybridization would have gradually diluted the Denisovan genetic identity while preserving some of their genetic material in hybrid populations. Evidence of multiple distinct waves of Denisovan admixture into modern human populations suggests this process may have occurred repeatedly across different regions of Asia and Oceania. Cultural factors should not be overlooked, though they remain speculative, given the absence of clear Denisovan cultural artefacts. If modern humans possessed more sophisticated technologies, hunting strategies, social organizations, or communication abilities, they may have outcompeted Denisovans in crucial domains. However, without material culture firmly attributed to Denisovans, Comparing their capabilities to those of contemporaneous modern humans remains challenging. This more complex picture of human history is sometimes described as a braided stream, rather than a simple tree. Different human lineages develop separately but periodically reconnected through interbreeding events, creating a genetic legacy that flows into present-day humans from multiple sources. Our species Homo sapiens is not the pure product of a single lineage, but rather a genetic mosaic with contributions from various archaic human groups. In conclusion, the reality of Denisovan genetic origins reveals a fascinating chapter in human history.